Hello, my name is Jackson Swear, and I am a member of the Reno County ARPA Task Force. I thank you for this opportunity to speak with you today. In May 2021, representatives from organizations serving Reno County formed a group to work with city and county leaders to gain input from Reno County residents on how they would prioritize the $17 plus million coming to our community from the American Rescue Plan COVID relief bill. In accordance with the inclusive, equitable spirit of the ARPA guidelines, and recognizing that it needed more voices to help guide the process, the task force expanded to eventually include 16 residents representing various community organizations, governing bodies, and groups. To further ensure an inclusive, high-quality process, the task force also partnered with K-State University's LeadCom Associates to help craft a facilitated civic engagement experience. The resulting plan was simple, reach roughly 1% of the Reno County population through 90-minute facilitated discussions with groups of 8 to 20 residents. The first meeting was held in late August of 2021, and by the time of the final meeting on October 21st of that year, the task force had heard from 553 residents at a total of 45 meetings hosted throughout Reno County. This was a process that speaks to the power of volunteering. From the 553 people who attended the meetings, to the 40 residents who stepped forth to convene the meetings, to the 18 facilitators who dedicated hours to listening to residents' concerns, and to the men and women who gave their time and insights as members of the task force. This initiative would not have been possible without you, and on behalf of the task force, I thank you. I would also like to thank Dr. Sean Eddington and his team of K-State's LeadCom Associates for their work in crafting the meeting process and synthesizing the data collected from those meetings into the final report you're about to hear. Now, I would like to introduce Dr. Eddington so that he can share the findings of the report. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Sean Eddington. I'm an assistant professor of communication studies at Kansas State University, and I'm an affiliate faculty member with the Leadership Communication Doctoral Program in the Staley School of Leadership. Um, I'm gonna be presenting the findings from uh, a program that my, my team uh, of doctoral students in the Leadership Communication Program and I designed developed, and then the fantastic folks from the Reno County Task Force facilitated uh, about how to use the ARP funds. So to determine how to best allocate funding received through the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, broad-based feedback was received from residents of Hutchinson and Reno County in Kansas. Meetings were hosted with 19 facilitators and represented various communities and local institutions within both Hutchinson and Reno County. In total, 45 sessions were conducted with 553 residents. Session participants represented a diverse group of community members that roughly mirrored the demographic profile of the adult population in Hutchinson and Reno County. The 553 sessions uh, and their participants generated over 1,100 ideas across the eight priority spending categories described by the ARP as prescribed by the legislation. In this presentation, I'll detail these ideas collected throughout the Hutchinson and Reno County community in further detail in a few moments. However, session participants generated most ideas and recommendations for ARP funding around seven key spending priorities. Following their participation, participants were invited to uh, evaluate their experience. And of those 553, 113 individuals completed a post-session survey and Overwhelmingly, uh, these individuals found that uh, the session and their, their experience in the, uh, in the process that we designed uh, was a positive one for them, and they felt very engaged um, and excited about uh, using their voices. And so, um, as I said, the participants had a broad reach within the community. This is a sample of some of the groups that were participating, we had Reno County pastor groups, um, the Prairie Land Realtors, the Southwest Bricktown neighborhood, the Hutchinson NAACP, the Boys and Girls Club. And for a full list, you can look at the appendix of our report um, that showcases all of the, the groups that were participating in the 45 different meetings. As I mentioned, participants identified over 1,100 ideas across all eight funding categories. Encouragingly, all of these funding areas generated a diverse set of solutions, except for the category for replacing public sector revenue loss. Solutions for addressing the broader negative economic impact to the county generated the largest number of ideas, followed by solutions to support the public health response. 
In each session, the participants were given three votes for the ideas that they believed were most important. They could divide the votes in any combination across ARP funding areas, and the feedback was further coded based on topical themes. Four themes, child care, workforce development, housing, and mental health, received more than 50% of all votes, suggesting that these ideas and strategies are among the highest priority for ARP funds. Three additional themes, local and small businesses, access to healthcare and recreation, each received more than 5% of all the votes. The remaining 16 themes each received less than 5% of the votes and examples of specific ideas that received the greatest amount of concurrence during a community conversation are described throughout the report, but I'll talk about them in the next several slides. As I said, solutions to child care was a consistent theme across all of the resident groups, all 45 meetings. Uh, one of the things that my team did is we took all of the, the written ideas and generated from the participants and created a word cloud. And as you can see on the slide, child care was consistent and prominent uh, as a funding priority across the 45 meetings. Now, Previously, I'd mentioned that these seven, uh, that the sessions themselves generated seven spending priorities, and these represent the priority focus for the participants and address the most critical issues facing Hutchinson and Reno County from the pandemic. As I mentioned, expanding childcare offerings and access was the key priority that uh, individuals wanted funded. So in these, uh, with this, what they meant, participants focused on providing incentives to establish more childcare facilities, uh, this can be through local businesses, private centers, or community-based uh, initiatives, as well as supplementing salaries to attract workers uh, in order to handle the gap in demand, and providing financial incentives to businesses or individual residents that help cover the expenses of these types of programs. The second most uh, pressing issue facing the county was strengthening workforce development programs. So here participants recognize the need for creative programs that would educate, train, and attract and retain talented individuals into the community. And this included a strong focus on job training programs for a full array of age groups from school co-op uh, apprenticeships to scholarship and loan repayment in order to attract young workers to job training programs for displaced workers. The third funding priority was developing more affordable housing. So most ideas in this area centered on economic investments or incentives to develop affordable housing and or rehab targeted neighborhoods. The fourth, expanding mental health resources. So participants ideas centered on solutions that would provide the necessary funds to expand the county's existing programs or provide counseling classes to help broader population identify and address issues before they manifest into deeper problems. The fifth funding priority, was supporting local and small businesses. So participants focused on the significant impact of COVID closures on local businesses, especially those connected to travel and tourism. To address these issues, participants discuss grants, incentives, and ideas for attracting visitors to the community. Our sixth funding category, expanding access to healthcare. Here participants brainstormed expanding healthcare locations and mobile uh, services coverage throughout the county. And there was also a strong appeal for providing increased pay for frontline healthcare workers. Finally, to en enhancing quality of life through access to recreational activities, participants discussed opportunities that would uh, enhance the quality of life by uh, creating access to recreational activities such as the river and trail access, as well as even park development. Now next, following each meeting, participants were invited to share their experiences in a post-session survey. And the richness of the responses and engagement with the process indicates a genuine concern and a connection with the community needs at large. It provides valuable insights into uh, how the funding solutions are likely to appeal to potentially a broad cross-section of the Reno County population. As I mentioned, uh, the participants themselves came from a variety of different community and, and local groups, uh, but we also had a, a fairly diverse population that took place in um, 
in the sessions from a demographic standpoint. Um, of those that answered the question, we had about 57% uh, of the participants that uh, followed up with the feedback survey were women, 43% were men. Uh, we had an age group of 35 to 64, representing nearly 70% of the participants uh, within 35 to 40, with 35 to 44 year old uh, age group being the largest group involved in these sessions. Uh, from an ethnic background, uh, the data that we had mirrors uh, the census data uh, regarding the population of, of the county. Additionally, we asked participants uh, their feelings about what, it, what it's like to live in Hutchinson and Reno County. And residents overwhelmingly expressed uh, the importance of Hutchinson and Reno County as a home. It's a place where they could build families. It's a built place where they could build their lives, uh, build connections within the community and be a part of something bigger than themselves. However, they did note that uh, there were some tensions uh, that were certainly surfaced and highlighted because of the ongoing pandemic. The first being this notion of change and stability. So this is represented via the need uh, and recognition that we need to change to be more economically competitive and thriving as a community while not losing sight of those traditions that make Hutchinson and Reno County home. The second tension is this idea that challenges also present opportunities. The ideas here are that there are challenges that the pandemic shed light on and exposed, but these are also opportunities in order to grow the community to, to reinvest in uh, not only the people, but also the, the city infrastructure. To initiate conversations, residents were then asked to identify how COVID-19 impacted the community. The impact on businesses was identified, uh, specifically the lack of cash reserves, as well as uncertainty about what to do during the shutdown period. But they also discussed how the lack of in-person schooling created mental health concerns for children, and as well as technology pressure, particularly with access to computers and consistent internet broadband throughout the community. Finally, participants noted that there were significant strains on a variety of community resources. In particular, residents cited churches, medical resources, financial services, as well as businesses uh, as most vulnerable during the peak period. Overall though, participants were highly engaged in the process, noting that they were able to identify and talk about different issues while also having their voices heard. Uh, participants were also uh, really willing and excited to uh, participate in another uh, similar event. Uh, and we asked folks if they would do it again and about 80% of them uh, said that they would, which speaks to a positive experience as well as the perceptions their perceptions of a strong engagement with the overall process. So next I'll briefly describe the summary of ideas generated by the funding categories. Uh, you can see this more fully in the report. Uh, I wanna also note that there was no subcoding um, of the ARP categories replacing public sector revenue loss as well as broadband infrastructure. Uh, it wasn't necessary, the ideas didn't necessarily deviate too far from one another. And so we were not presenting any summary pie charts for these ARP funding categories um, in the next couple of slides. So regarding public, supporting public health, you see that the largest piece of this uh, pie graph is the fact that people wanted to uh, invest in mental health resources with 36%. You also see uh, ideas surrounding access to health care, uh, 24%, and then social services and mental health care and health care workers at 14 and 13%. Regarding addressing negative economic impacts, you see workforce development, training, and education at 33%, uh, local and small businesses at 25%, and child care at 19% of all the ideas. Regarding broadband infrastructure, overall participants focused on developing broadband infrastructure and generated similar ideas across all 45 of the meetings. For providing premium pay for essential workers, again, you see the focus, 56% of the ideas around this uh, ARP category were about childcare, with 23% being about employment, employment and wages and 21% being about education and training. Regarding water and sewer infrastructure, participants uh, rallied 57% of the ideas around overall infrastructure. And then they talked specifically about issues of wastewater at 14%, flooding at 18%, and energy issues at 11%.
equity focused issues, we saw the issues around housing as uh, one of the most prominent in this space, um, as well as child care and homeless services. So one of the things that you'll see that, and that you might have picked up on as we've gone through these different pie charts is the fact that child care, as well as even um, the workforce development programs were threaded throughout all of the different categories and were touching different parts of, of the community. Finally, we included uh, an eighth category called other possibilities. These were for ideas that uh, didn't necessarily fit within uh, the seven prescribed ARP categories, uh, but we also wanted participants to be able to voice their ideas about how these funds could be used with the knowledge that, uh, you know, that we would collect them and they'd be, they would be part of the report. Uh, you see recreation as being 23% of the ideas here, workforce development, as well as even childcare generating ideas um, as, as pressing funding categories. So finally, um, the process provided a forum uh, to engage a large number of the county's residents. And they identified a variety of solutions to the current issues surfaced by COVID-19. To capitalize on this positive momentum, participants and the broader Reno County population should be made aware of the ongoing work inspired by this program. Uh, we argue that it will demonstrate concern and attentiveness to the citizen by community leadership. It will also help showcase the steps taken to address these common problems. Ideally, this communication will also highlight the broad scale nature of the process uh, used in order to solicit ideas and illuminate the impact of these programs on individuals or groups in the community. And these activities should help in the implementation of the selected programs, as well as continue to maintain community involvement in other programs. So with that, again, my name is Dr. Sean Eddington, uh, and I couldn't have done this work without the help of my fantastic team at Kansas State, Dr. Susan Metzger, Jeff Johansson, Monica McFarlane, Sakshi Bhatti, and Jessica Kerr. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it over to, uh, to you all for questions and answers, and I look forward to having conversation with you. Thanks.